Chairman Mao, Jamie Howe, Ho Chi Minh, Asif Din, Vaslav Havel, Graham Savel, No Surrender, Percy Fender, Guerrilla Cricket. Hello, welcome to Guerrilla Cricket. Uh, there are certainly challenges in our national game at the moment. Test performance results have been poor. The very structure of our UK domestic game is under scrutiny from the ground ground floor upwards. These are all things we'll be exploring and discussing in detail on Guerrilla Cricket. But in this environment of question and concern, our counties need to be making the game as accessible, attractive and effective as they can. The Cricket Supporters Association exists to represent the interests of fans to the governors of our game. And recently, they've been working with the Lancashire Action Group, a passionate and vocal group of Red Rose fans who want to ensure that the voice of Lancashire fans is heard and represented by their county. Their co-founder is Ian Lomax, and he is our guest today. Ian, welcome to Gorilla Cricket. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Um, so, Ian, um, let's just start by talking a little bit about you. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself and, and how long you followed Lancashire. Um, wow. I followed Lancashire from being about the age of four or five. Um, I'm a passionate Lancashire fan. I've got an unusual job, so I, I, I had the ability to go and watch some uh, home and away in the county championship, uh, partly to make myself feel really young one of the youngest because obviously it's a lot of retired people go with the because it's played in the daytime in the week it's very unusual for sports of course so um i got to know some of the players certainly in the 90s your stuart laws my lawyers etc and um, hung around with them um Lancashire had a very big support when i when i was a member there was a, a queue waiting queue one of the times i was a member years ago and um, it was capped at 13 and a half thousand and um had great fun watching them home and away. Um, the deterioration in the club happened, certainly a lot of problems with stewards, et cetera, in 20, 25 years ago. And there was a lot of outcry when the ground was um, was turned around. Um, obviously, Lancashire had a lot of financial problems. They lost test cricket. The ground was crumbling. Uh, they were very poorly run. A lot of decisions were made. Stands were taken down that had only been up five or six years. Mm. Um, and... The upshot was in 2011 when Lancashire had to play away from Old Trafford with the redevelopment. Mm. Uh, coincident, well, not coincident, but we won the championship for the first time in 77 years, playing most of our games at Liverpool uh, and a couple of games at Blackpool and Southport. Mm -hmm. And then when we came back, shock horror, the ground had been redeveloped, but with no thought, unfortunately, for us poor members. Uh, an awful lot of facilities had been taken out. Uh, the museum had been demolished, which was a pretty disgraceful thing. The library had gone. A lot of the benefits of being a member disappeared, and you were no longer allowed to sit in the pavilion in, uh, in any of the three well, well, you're leading on there to, to I think, um, why the Lancashire Action Group came mm. into existence. So um, yes. for those who don't know, um, just, just tell us a little bit about how it came to be uh, and what it what it sets out to do? Sure. Well, we, we started um, a lot of a lot of us. Um, I mean, I still remember that. Time. A lot of members walked out, didn't come back because of the state of the ground. Um, and then we formed in 2014. Um, there was a steering group that was put together by someone else. I was asked to join, and two of our group then met with the um, chief exec, who was a fairly new chief exec then, Daniel Gibney, who's still the chief exec now and also the director of cricket, who was Mike Watkinson. And they had two meetings. The second meeting was a lot more cordial. Um, and from that meeting, we realised that we weren't happy with the setup of the club. And we formed the action group. And I was very concerned about the facilities, the members' benefits and spectators, they were breaking disability laws, et cetera, et cetera. And so we, we did hundreds of surveys around the ground. And that's how we started. We then wrote to the chairman, and the chief exec to say, we're not happy with this. You've seen the membership as just, you know, it's just disappearing. It was incredible how many people left the club. Um, the so many of the, as, as I said, so many of the facilities had gone. If it was a cold day, which surprisingly often is in Manchester, 
Um, and of course, we now know county cricket's played in April and September, the majority of it. So unless you've got a fleece and a flask and a, a, a mug of tea with you, um, it was an extremely cold environment and you couldn't watch the cricket. There was a massive sight screen across the front of the pavilion where now obviously the pavilion was behind the bowler's arm when they moved it around 90 degrees. You couldn't see the cricket. So unless you pay an extremely large premium rate uh, for a membership, and we're already then the, the the most expensive membership in the country, by the way, including your Surrey's and Middlesex's, uh, you know, up north, you know, we've only just put the, um, we've all had to pay for um, inside toilets recently. We've only just been allowed them. So it was extremely expensive to, you know, the, the membership was a very expensive um, and the old traditional membership, which is most people now just have this 11 day offer. An awful lot of people just left. I mean, they really did just left the club a lot. Well, right in saying the, the memberships declined from something like 13,000 to somewhere between four and 5,000 now. Yeah, and it, they capped it at 13,500 um, a few years back, 20, 20 odd years ago, and then that reduced dramatically. And then, particularly after the, the ground rebuild. Um, and also, don't forget those. Members, the four or five thousand then were traditional members paying over two hundred pounds. Where now you can be a digital member, mm. not even go to a game, and that classes you as a member. You get a vote at the AGM, etc. And also they do an eleven day membership. They got rid of the county membership, which annoyed a lot of people as well, um, and they stop life membership. So a lot of the members they've got, the, the four or five thousand or whatever they've got now, mm. they a lot of those won't be kind of a proper, you know. Member, we can go to any day's cricket you want, and um, you know, eleven day membership is what it says on the tip. So you just um, got you got eleven days. You can choose to use as and wish as and how you wish. Does that yeah. include T twenties? Uh, um, I think it might London do now. Certainly, else. originally it, it didn't, but I think it might include the T twenties away from the Yorkshire game, which they, they really push. I mean, the T yeah. twenty crowds really went down massively. Um, they have built them back up, and I think part of the reason is. Since we started the fanzine three years ago, we we run the only fanzine in county cricket, you know, aimed at a particular yeah. club. But basically, we got a lot of our changes in. There was a threat of an SGM, a special general meeting, needed 100 members. We had over 400 names. We were on Crick Info. Um, we were we got in the newspaper, and we the club did concede some of the points. But the main points where you couldn't go on the pavilion, etc. The problems were still there. They put half a library back in, you know, like they used the old storeroom after demolishing it. They've still not put the museum back, which has been promised four or five times. There's very strong rumours, I've been told, basically, that a lot of the trophies, etc., were um, destroyed when the museum was demolished. I mean, um, it was a poor place to watch cricket. Alan Lee at the Times had Lancashire, I think, 17th out of 18th of the counties to watch a county game. It was a brand new stadium. It was built completely for the test cricket. I remember the honours board, you couldn't even read it. It was made on balsa wood. You know, a, a decent golf club wouldn't have it in their toilet. So that got replaced. And these are one of the, the number of things, you know, please replace the, please open the exits, allow people in the stands. They used to close half the stands. It's a great, horrible place to watch county cricket. We'd much rather go to a nice out ground. Um, and so, and they, they, they promised to reduce this massive sign screen, which went across the whole of the pavilion. So if you can imagine a, a beautiful pavilion, you mm. couldn't see any of the cricket if you're a normal member in your own pavilion. Probably the only pavilion in world cricket where a member couldn't see the cricket, unless you paid the premium rates to go in the three balconies. And that was the main reason I gave up my membership around uh, about 2016. Um, and on from that, and then they started their own members' representative group. So they basically formed on the back of our action group what's called the members representative group but they were handpicked from the club they weren't democratically elected so, uh, so i know that's definitely one of the key things so we're going to we'll definitely explore that mm. but is do, uh, based upon the pressure or actions of your the lancashire action group mm. uh, did that have the direct impact of the county in turn creating whatever its shortcomings, and I know you feel that those are there, but it was created on the back of the pressure that the, the, the Lancashire yeah, Action Group about created. That. Yeah, about okay. Yeah. I mean, our survey was damning. I mean, we literally surveyed, and, and to be fair to the old chairman, Michael Cairns, he actually let us um, survey the ground, and he even took a survey off me. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> so we the ground saying, what's wrong with the club? And then the, the club asked for the surveys, and we had names, addresses, emails, etc., on there. And we said, well, no, we're not giving you our surveys. And they wanted to see the surveys themselves. 
And there was a, a major meeting, the end of forum meeting in 2014, when we got re- just got relegated. Um, I don't know if your club's Middlesex, you mentioned Middlesex earlier. Middlesex, it is, and, yes. And beaten us. Um, and we got relegated yeah. at the end of 2014. So on the cricket side, it was a, it was really poor. We found out that Paul Allett was the only member of the board responsible for cricket. Mike Watkinson's one of his best mates. Mm. He's the director of cricket, protecting him. Um, and a lot of people were annoyed with Paul Allett's involvement because he had been voted off the old committee by the members and then he was co-opted back on by the club. Um, and then the nominations committee had come in where you couldn't actually, members couldn't vote for who they wanted to represent them. They were just given, if there were two board positions, they were given two choices. So there's an incredible amount of unrest at the club. As I said, this, I got a disability charity involved because of breaking disability laws. We've taken, we were taking disability seats out for one day internationals to sell extra tickets. Uh, it was incredible what was going on. Um, and to be fair, the club did act on quite a few of the changes. I mean, they knew there'd be a special general meeting called and we could literally kick the whole board out. And Lancashire were desperate to get test cricket, etc. which is, we understand that, but not to the detriment of the members. It's a members club. It's owned by the members at the end of the day, just like any golf club or whatever club you might be a member of. Um, so it was, yeah, so that kind of then died down a bit and then we started a fanzine um, three or four years ago. And the not, day after the spin, the- Right, that's this the is not the, spin, the only fans in county cricket, and it's it it's, it was a tremendous success. Um, the day after the fans in came out, I got banned from the ground, along with a guy called Timothy Saint Abba, who was on, had been on the MRG, the members' representative group. He realised they weren't doing anything and walked right. out. Three or four of our, of our action group were on the MRG. We were trying to, it was great. You know, okay, let's try and build bridges, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But. We had two or three guys who basically only lasted a couple of years because they just couldn't get anything done. They weren't given any power whatsoever. So I then met the club a couple of times and the club were saying to me, well, if you're nice to us in the second fanzine, we might let you back. That was basically just because he knew I was a massive fan and obviously being banned from your own club is not a great thing. You know, it was obviously disappointing. Um, but the second fanzine was probably worse than the first one. We were more critical because we weren't. And I thought, well, if you know, I'm not going to get back in the ground. It helps us a lot of fanzines because the news of us being um, banned from the club or from Old Trafford for cricket matches. So I could still go and have a pint before I watch my uh, beloved football team. I won't mention them at the moment. They're not doing very well. Um, it's the one my team beat. And no... <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Well, most teams, you have to narrow that one down, I think. But, uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so, and the fanzine um, has, has been great. And it's, um, we're obviously a, val- a voice for a lot of the fans. Um, we've made mistakes along the way. Maybe we're, we've probably gone from being Corbynites now to Starmerites or whatever the word is. You know, we've more central ground. We've got the CSA involved, the Cricket Sports so- Association. Alan Hams, are their Lancashire rep. He's a massive Lancashire fan. And, He's come involved. He's got involved a little bit with um, fanzine uh, updates. I got involved with the Opposed 100 campaign with Annie, mm. old Annie, who you know. Uh, we counter cricket matters. The Lancashire Action Group actually produced the first fanzine, uh, the first I, magazine. I did, and when I when I have to say when I look at the magazine which I have next to me here, which you kindly sent me, not the spin. Um, oh, you got I, it. Go I, I, right. I I see the sort of the format similarities. <laughs> Some of the production yeah. is done the same. Let's let's say that Ian, let's just take a step back. So before we come on to the magazine, not the spin, let's let's just uh, so the key issues um that you seem to be facing was Lancashire. So Lancashire, you put forward, I think I read 34 recommendations across a whole range mm. of things, starting from fan representation right down to uh, member facilities or, yes. or I won't say down to across to member facilities um, of which the club acted upon or promised to act upon 22 yes so, 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 yeah. so that, that that would suggest that there was some listening going on I think they had to listen because Lancashire, they knew there would yeah. be a, a, a special general meeting called I mean you only need 100 members at Old Trafford I mean Yorkshire have had their own recently haven't they they've been looking to mm. call them off in there more um, and we had quadruple the numbers, you know, without even having to try, you know, because of the survey and also social media was starting to get involved. I mean, our Twitter and Facebook following is really strong, you know, very strong now. Um, and so, yeah, they acted, they acted on that. But they, um, 
a lot of the things we really wanted, like the members to be allowed in the the balconies um, in the pavilion, which mm. for me should be a basic right of any member. You know, sorry, you're allowed on virtually any balcony. Lords, you're allowed any any balcony you member. Are. Yeah, I get that. Members that. Are. You know, I go. I've been to the Oval and Lords, watch fantastic views. Um, and the club, a lot of the problem with the MRG was when the guys who wanted to actually do something, and people were taking days off work to go to these meetings, proper fans, you know, I know a lot of them. And they were finding that they were very frustrated. Um, and, you know, a lot of the guys left. I think it's one or two guys who still made an effort. But then they, hand, they were handpicked their own people. So it's a bit like a trade union. So the MRG uh, yeah, is the boss. members' representative group. Yeah, with no power, no actual power. They're not, they're not even... Which, um, which no. in theory, should guide the board. <laughs> However, yeah. it's no. one of your key concerns is that there is no fan-based election of that There's no council MRG election. There's no democratic group. election. There's no membership election. I mean, it's a members' representative group, and a lot of guys says, well, I'm a member. They don't represent me, you know. It, it, it's it was it was started because of of us in 2014, yeah. and they've, they've tried to they're saying that they've got more power. And I mean, the minutes never used to come out. That I know the people that were on the MRG years ago said that doesn't wasn't a true reflection of the meeting. A lot of the the meetings they had, there were more club officials there than MRG members. I mean, if you look at some of the original meet meetings, I mean, the club took them down off the uh, took them down off the internet. Some of the original meetings, but we've got all the minutes. So um, and. The, they've literally, I mean, I think there is more of a base where you've got a problem with, say, you're not happy with the cost of tea in the pavilion and they might try and help out with that. I'm sure they've got some good guys on there, good guys, you know, men and women on there who are trying to help the club or trying to help members. But there is no democratic process. I know when we asked them, well, do you think you should be democratically elected? They never came back to us. So, <laughs> so, so if we were to sort of nail down some of those things that, that still rankle <laughs> and not just rankle okay. but you feel a fundamentally sort of need addressing yeah, I mean, what one is representation same. sorry go on sorry what one i'm assuming is representation a second one is i guess transparency yeah. um uh, a third would be the fact that when things have been put forward by yourselves they including a recent survey which we'll talk about in a minute um those have not really been addressed or listened to or even, even no. welcomed in, in, in any capacity. Um, yeah. And effectively, the, 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 you, you feel, I think, that the member experience, everything from ability to view the game to facilities, is still south of oh, what a yeah. club of Lancashire stature should be. Would that be a fair summary of the situation? Absolutely. As you feel at the moment? Yeah, and what our comparison that we've done the new fanzine is with Surrey, whose membership has gone through the roof. Um, and they they make money; they have to make money to a business as well. But the, the still, it's basically run by the club still. That the members still choose who's on the board. Uh, they're properly consulted. We have one forum a year, and you like this one, but you're not allowed to talk about the facilities. You can have a forum. We can only talk about the cricket. We're not actually allowed to talk about the members' facilities. The fact that they ripped out the ladies' stand for the red chat. Sorry, the point. Nice. Um, the fact that members can't go, you know, on any of the balconies above the pavilion, the fact that a lot of the old members' facilities have been lost. And um, last year they had incredible communication problems, five hours to get through on the phone, literally five hours, some of the people speaking to outside the ground. Um, incredible problems with communication and um, disability issues still, people with disability problems, no one coming back. Game tickets getting cancelled because they didn't have enough stewards. They're not a well-run club, unfortunately. And um, certainly for, for a member's experience, um, obviously everyone had COVID issues and we accept that, but the, some of the problems they had, refunds not being, um, for games that were rained off, the, the Yorkshire T20, you know, it's supposed to be refunded in 30 days. Surrey refund immediately. A, I remember the fifth day of the, the test match that was called off a year or two back, and Surrey got their money back within two or three days. Lancashire will hang on to it as long as he can. Um, this was the Indian which, which in your arm, is this the India test you're talking about? Which, of course, yeah, India yeah, are playing as back for by yeah. playing this summer, aren't they? <laughs> well, they are. No, that was slightly different. I'm somewhat more on the Lancashire side of it, but where there was a T20 Yorkshire game, which is ah. obviously a sellout crowd virtually, and, and people were not getting answered. And that's been going on for a long time. So, this certainly, we want what we want is two guys at least on the board who represent the members and their view. 
playing games at Sedbra, a public school in the middle of nowhere in Cumbria, a home championship, a one-day game. They should be using the outgrounds. They've got three fantastic outgrounds. Well, one of which is Egbert, there. isn't it? Which is Egbert, which, which they're not which playing noted there. as being beautiful as a, as a fabulous <laughs> ground. Well, but, well, sorry, the, the Surrey comparison is an interesting one because, I mean, one of the key things that I assume one would focus in on there is I think Surrey – from 2010 went from seven and a half thousand to 15,000 members. So they've doubled quite literally. Oh yeah. They've uh, actually and, and Lancashire the has gone in directly the opposite. Um, We've got lost members direction. in Nottinghamshire a couple of years ago. Yeah. Nottinghamshire look after members and, and their, their membership increased. Yeah. And again, that's a test round that have to make money. You can do both, you know, fine. I accept Lancashire should be having rock concerts. They're in a fantastic position. Every time Manchester United play a home game, they make a tenner on the car park. You know, very few well, clubs can do that. some of the hospitality, as I recall. Exactly. The hospitality there is incredible. Yeah. And I accept, of course, the, I think they should have concerts at the ground, mm -hmm. but then they should make sure that the games are played at an outground within, that's, you know, that's a decent outground that, that fans can go to. Another example, that a massive game at the end of last year at Egbert, where they moved because of a concert. They make a lot of money for a concert. They moved it last minute to Egbert. There's all sorts of shenanigans going on they didn't build the, the normal little stand that they have so you can see so the only view virtually for the whole ground was it was literally in a ground level they wouldn't pay for a small temporary stand even though they're making how much for the concerts to be moved there and liverpool were very annoyed about that you know and, and this is a massive game lancashire haven't won the league you know since 1934 playing any games at Old Trafford, and we've only won it once, which is, you know, the championship in 2011 at Egbert. And we won the game. We looked like we might win the league, but then, of course, Warwickshire pips us. Yeah. But there's no, again, the people struggling to get in the tickets. Is, and, and the members kind of just accepted the apathy. And unfortunately, a lot of members have left. I mean, I wish we'd started the fanzine back in 2014 because they've lost so many members. And, um, you know, when we started the action group, they've lost so many members. And so... You know, the AGN last year had 42 people turn up. I mean, my auntie Edith, God rest her soul, her bowling club would have more members turn up at their AGN. The annual general meeting. Crown 42. Green Bowling, I think you're talking about, not as in the, the yeah, Crown Green Bowling. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> she's got to play the Waterloo. Um, but the, you know, and that, that's astonishing, you know, the fact that members have given up because they can't, they're, they're not, their voice isn't worth anything. There's no point. All they put forward, they have four people stand for the board, they put four names forward. So you can't stop them going on the board. You're not, there's no election. There's not six people standing for four positions. So, th so this, is the, this is one of the key direct comparisons that you made, interestingly, with Surrey. Surrey has, mm -hmm. a, I don't think they call it an MRG, but they have effectively a, a, a fully member-elected body that kind yeah. of provides governance over the club's management board. And That's right. That, 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 that is freely elected. Lancashire has chosen not to do that, mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, I believe, says very clearly that it feels that that MRG is doing a job, whereas mm -hmm. fundamentally you feel it isn't. <laughs> Yeah, and it's even that it's even if they are now doing a job, which I don't agree that they are because they're not they're not that independent in any way. Mm. The fact is that surely in a member's own club, the members should vote for who represents them. That's fairly, you know, I would have thought that's a fairly stable argument. It's difficult to go against that argument. The, the moral side of it is, you know, it is a member's club, so the members should have some say in the running of the club. And, and to put that into context, I mean, you're not looking to have 10 20 people am i right in saying that you're looking for two representatives to be placed upon that it, within the mrg who well, are well, directly elected by fans did i understand that right well, based on what i've read no what well, we'd like two members on the board ah, um, right. who, who represent the members but also the mrg as long as it's democratically elected i don't care who who's voted for you know we we're certainly not interested in ourselves. So nominated by by the club, not 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 elected by the members. So yeah, not does. elected. So it should be like the old committee where the people are elected. Okay. So if you stand and you and you win enough votes, then you go on to the committee. And they're basically saying that we don't trust you to be able to run the club. But on the on the members' side of the club, it's been so badly run with only thousands of members leaving. It's it's hard to argue against it. You know, on and well, off the pitch, twenty odd years, I've been. 
awful for Lancashire, really. If you look at it, they've won, they've won yeah. very little. Well, let, let's 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 come on to probably the central question, I guess. If I, you know, I, 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 from my own personal perspective of being a visitor to Lancashire, uh, and I actually went to watch Middlesex a couple of years ago. I, I, I was up north anyway. I stayed in the hotel. I could open mm-hmm. my windows and literally watch Middlesex fall apart um, from my balcony. Um, I think staying in the hotel got me my ticket anyway, if I recall, it was all like in the in the sort of package I had. Um, but I had I, I seem to recall in, I went in the pavilion. Um, I don't recall I went upstairs, and um, it may well have been shut off. Um, I, yeah, I remember, I but I do remember having a pleasant lunch, um, and, a, and as I often do when I go to watch Middlesex at different grounds. Uh, some very nice and pleasant conversations with members there. <laughs> um, so, so it was warm. It was welcoming. Uh, you know, it was a nice place to be apart from, as I say, watching Middlesex fall over like a pack of cards on that particular occasion. Um, so, so it didn't seem like, um, it, I didn't have the impression as a visitor of an institution falling apart. <laughs> and yet you're very clearly saying that there are, fundamental issues and and that what is it the 13,000 members that you know down to 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 four that's a very damning statistic mm. so i mm-hmm. guess the central question there is for you in in a way is what is the reason for them what's the main reason for them not to want to buy into the rep, rep recommendations and requests that you're making as they all seem to be fundamental to the health of, a, of, a, of an institution which let's say Lancashire is I mean it's, it's you know such an old historic club what, what, what's the barrier do you think that is not breaking the doors down and moving things forward a little bit I think um, I don't think they like being told what to do they never have been the, the, the board or the committee at, at Old Trafford um, the old chairman, Michael Cairns, was ran it himself, you know, similar to a Colin Graves type figure, like running everything himself. Um, I think now they're just basically, they won't, I mean, we, we getting the CSA involved was, was a big thing for us, as you know, the Cricket Sports Association. Well, well let's talk about that because you've been working with them. They are. Yeah, and we thought that would help and Alan met them and they're just, they're just basically stonewalling us. Um, and it's very disappointing. And we do a survey with them, 98% of people think that they should be um, democratic representation on the boards and committees at, at Old Trafford. They've said to us that they've never found anybody who wants to stand the board. When we asked them at the last AGM, well, we found 10 people who said they'd be interested. We've been doing a survey. What, what was the volume of response to that survey? Um, the, oh God, well, we, all we could do was give leaflets outside the ground. They wouldn't let us do the survey in the ground. They wouldn't even let us put, mm. <laughs> put that flag up in at an outground, which is quite funny. But they, they won't. They wouldn't let us do the survey in the ground, which they did six, seven years ago, um, which is very disappointing. Particularly with having the CSA behind us, and as I say, we've moved more from a left wing organisation, you want to put it that way, to try and be more democratic. We've got a guy called Roy Kavanagh, who's done talks at Old Trafford. He's one of our editors. He was involved with the, the, the first uh, County Cricket Matters, and um, you know, you know mm-hmm. a, res- a respectable figure in the game. Wrote a lot of books on Lancashire, etc. He, he's involved with the fanzine now. There's nothing major about the fans in a way behind way behind the team. But I think maybe partly the way we started off, they've got a problem with that. But any member who writes to the club often don't get a response. That's been known for years and years and years. You're banging your head against a brick wall. We know better than us. It's a little bit like the uh, the old mill owners. You know, we, we, we know better. And we say, well, you've lost all these members. I mean, they did act on some of the things we asked. We're not the most expensive yeah. membership anymore. They put half a library back in. They allowed... They opened most of the stands. They've now put some kind of a see-through site. It's not ideal, but at least you can see some of the cricket. Mm-hmm. You said you went in there at lunchtime, the food was okay. The food has been known to be appallingly bad at Old Trafford compared to other, other counties over the years. And I have been told it's been proved last couple of years. But where did you watch the cricket from? Because once you finish your lunch, presumably, you couldn't see the cricket from being in the pavilion unless there's a small gap where the site's and, and this is because they've gone with the kind of 
what I would call the airline seat principle, is it? You've got, you know, first class, business class, economy. That's right. <laughs> As a well, street, and economy is downstairs and can't go upstairs, basically. That's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, there's three, right. three balconies and the members aren't allowed, on, a traditional member isn't allowed on any of the three balconies unless you pay a premium rate into a VIP membership, they call it the Red Rose membership, and then there's a Lancaster membership. But also the fact was when they built, when they moved the ground 90 degrees and changed, you know, Mm. basically moved it round round well you had the point to come in and the hotel didn't you yeah that's right but there's a massive side screen though across the whole of the pavilion you couldn't watch the cricket i think we found six seats one day where you could actually see the cricket from mm. so a, a, a traditional member can't watch the cricket in his own pavilion it's madness you know and, and they'd taken out the old lady stand a lot of the old ladies we spoke to um um back in 2014 were very disappointed and it's a cold place. It's a cold, grey, miserable place for a game of county cricket at times, you know. Um, There's many like yeah, will tell you it rains like more in spot. Sydney than it does in the, at Old Trafford, by the way. But yeah, I take it. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true, actually. <laughs> well, remember when they're going to, jump, we're going to move to Wigan, apparently Wigan have a, a bigger rainfall and they had all the problems with the, with the local council, etc. Oh, OK. <laughs> but the... the we, we really thought... They, they, they said they'd listen to us. I said Alan met them and obviously he's... he's um, the Lancashire rep of the of the CSA, the, the um, Cricket Supporters mm. Association. But no, I mean it's not just us. I think they just they don't they, don't, they stonewall anyone. They said they've had no one who would stand for the for the board. But you we found ten who support. ten who would yeah. and, and, and we, had yeah. strong credentials. And responsible people, absolutely. Um, and we've also um, we've we you know we've tried to speak to the club in the past. They spoke to us at first. You're not, we're not allowed to sell the fans in the ground, which is fine. But, you know, it goes ahead. They say we, we like having a fans in. Well, I don't believe that for a minute. But they, it's, it's, it's difficult. I and mean, it's almost become a bit entrenched, their opinion, when they should. If any business these days that's run is a problem, they should want to see what the problem is and try and sort it out. But it's almost, no, we know what's, we know what's best. It's not, you know, it's not a great experience for a lot of members, unfortunately, um, being a member of the club. I'm sure... There's other sides to the story and people say it's got better. I think it has probably got slightly better. But the fact is when they said we can't find any members to stand for the board and the fact that they don't want it democratic. We, we, we reproduced Daniel Gibney's response to um, why, you know, it's it's not a simple democratic process for members to get on the board or the MRG. And we, we produced it in full in the fanzine. And it's if you actually read between the lines, it's a pretty poor state for the club to be in basically we don't trust you lads we don't trust the memberships to run the club even though we've lost all these thousands of members you know and we're playing home games in durham because we've got a concert on or whatever we've done um it, it's it's really poor it's it's, it's very disappointing it, and as i say 42 people turn up at the agm 42 it was a decent day's weather we're playing yorkshire you know our biggest game of the season really um, and people have just given up, and a lot of fans who go home the way, and they don't bother. They can't be bothered with the AGM because you can't vote anything that's significant. You can't get any change. So, so, I mean, I you you as you you said earlier, you kindly sent me a copy of Not the Spin. It's quite an interesting mix, actually, because because <laughs> there's parts of it that very forcibly make the points that you're making. So it has a sort of a I, 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 I hesitate to use the word militant <laughs> but it's certainly forthright in putting forward <laughs> it's 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 uh, the point of view that you, you you've been doing quite eloquently here very eloquently here um, but the other part of it is genuinely a fan magazine you know oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, really, yeah. there's some really great stuff around um you know the different outgrounds that uh, have been played at previous players i think there was was it uh, who was somebody i was looking at uh, an article this month which was about one of the Famous old players of yesteryear. I'm trying to remember who we have, it was. We have a lot of. We have Paul Fitzpatrick who writes for us, ex uh, Guardian correspondent, and he he sends us uh, a feature every, every Johnny Briggs. Yeah, about answers. Johnny Briggs and stuff like that. So, yes. so yeah, yeah, it, yeah, we've got it, 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 Yeah, it straddles an interesting line between, you know, <laughs> genuine celebration of Lancashire, Lancashire's history, and supporting the club, and and Ooh. whilst also carrying that sort of political aspect of pushing at the club to improve key things yeah it's, it's 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 obviously very political at the moment because in living memory it's the first time that two resolutions have been put forward to, to the forthcoming age yet so obviously that's the highlight we've very we've never had a winter fanzine before 
Um, obviously, two years ago, we had no one at the grounds, unfortunately. But we, we would normally produce this fanzine in April, stroke May, for the mm. obviously coming down to start the season. We brought it out early, um, and we've had an incredible amount of success and, and sales um, online because we want people to be able, because the AGM will be very early into the season. It's probably the first game of the season, the first or second evening. And so we want people to basically vote, whether they agree with us or not. If they can't get there in person and um, try and get more than 42 people this year, hopefully, we'll try. They can vote by proxy on the resolutions that we're putting forward. And, you know, if you read the resolutions, I would have thought most cricket fans would say, or members of other clubs would go, well, well yeah, what's wrong with that? That's the difference yeah. between football and cricket. We're not owned by the Glazers in America who don't care and they want a Super League or whatever. We're not owned by um, sport washing country. Uh, Arab states were basically out by the members. I live in Stockport. It's tough being a Manchester United Stockport fan. County. Oh, Manchester oh, yeah. From. yeah, yeah. Well, they don't support Stockport County, but uh, yeah, unfortunately. But no, seriously, it, that's the fundamental difference that you can do something. I know the CSA are very, you know, we've seen what's happened with the hundred and, and the way cricket's going. Um, it's very important that the members who own most of the counties have a say in the running of their... Well, just hold that thought for a second, because I wanted to sort of bring us there in a minute. I just want to make sure we've re sort of reprised some of the key yeah. things there. So um, there was the work you've done directly with the CSA, mm -hmm. which really kind of reprised some of those key... Fundamentally, was about better, uh, more... Uh, uh, representation, uh, elected representation unto the board and the members group. Um, there were, I'm sure there were other things, but that was the key thing there. And obviously the respondents to the survey were 98% endorsing that request mm -hmm. to the club. From right. what I yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's accountability as well, isn't it? It's been accountable. Uh, it, it is. Uh, you've also in the, the Not The Spin magazine, which has been going for how long has Not The Spin been going? Um, we're, we're into our fourth year. We've had, um, we've, we're now on our 10th fanzine. We reached 10. We never thought we'd get to 10. What's its circulation? Our circulation is around, we get about five, 6,000 people who read the fanzine. Um, we have get, we sell normally around about So that's 1, more people than are members? That's right. Oh, more which people is, than members read it. Yeah, which is, which more which is pretty still, interesting yeah. in, in, in itself. No, no, it's, it's, it is well read. And it's, and it's, we, it's very well critically received, which is great. And um, mm. got some great reviews. No, I'm um, not a Lancashire fan, and I happily put my feet up over the weekend and read it. As I say, it was right, well, it's that interesting it. mix between, between a clear point of view about the way the club well, is wrong. We don't want to just be there. Genuine fan stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Genuine fan yes. stuff. And then the other thing that, that you, you did in there, which I think is interesting, is you made that direct comparison with Surrey, who, where now mm. the pricing is pretty similar. The yes. discounts for lack of cricket, COVID-related, were delivered in different ways, but were not dissimilar. But where Surrey <laughs> scores, I think, is things like reciprocal members' rights, um, universal pavilion access, I and mean, it is very much the people's yeah. pavilion. <laughs> Sorry, magnificent uh, pavilion, is it? It's very, it's, oh, oh, it is. Best. I, I think it's so nice. Spends a lot of time in the Lord's Pavilion, but yes, it is. Yeah. They have a thriving museum. The Lancashire one closed in 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 two thousand and ten, um, and obviously their membership has more than doubled. Lancashire's has 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 fallen. So there's some very interesting for two major Test match grounds. There's two mm. quite different seemingly approaches for the way that, that they, they they go about business. So so that kind of leads us on to sort of a really interesting discussion area, I think, is if we start to look forward to the things that might change as a result of England's poor test performance, Red Bull mm -hmm. reset, you know, mm -hmm. there is... You know, there, are, there is a feeling that franchise is in some description and, you know, ask 10 people and 10 people will give you 10 different views of what that might actually mean, by the way. <laughs> but 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 it, there is a feeling that those franchises are in some capacity going to be built around test match grounds. Yeah. How do you feel that impacts, or, or it may not, the way that, Lancashire is currently thinking because it is undoubtedly a major test match 
venue. Well, the massive advantage Lancashire have with the 100 is they're the only county that's not paired with another county. So you have the, the laughable, and I know, I'm sure Annie can probably currently describe it, but I don't think she's yet gone to watch a home franchise game in South Wales for all the Somerset fans going over there. I don't think they'd even no. put a tax. Um, so we're the only club county, which is a big advantage, that um, is we're just the only ones affiliated to the Manchester Originals. Now, I know a lot of Liverpool-based um, Lancashire fans don't particularly want to go and watch the Manchester Originals for obvious reasons. Um, but that's a big advantage. We haven't got a problem with Lancashire playing 100 games. Obviously, they're going to see it as, and, they'll, and they'll promote it. A lot of the members don't like the way it's been promoted um, in the fact that they don't sit, they're not treating it separately than Lancashire. And there was a, a letter that came out from Simon Catchage that was very quickly <laughs> deleted a couple of years ago, who was the new coach of the Irish Manchester Hall, Originals. Yeah. And it was basically saying Lancashire in. And a lot of the players were, before, yeah. the, obviously the first year got postponed because of COVID, they were, Dane Villas was a Lancashire captain and he was going to be them playing for the Divisionals, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And that changed slightly. But they, obviously the more that they put those two together is a massive advantage for the club. And um, the way that the club, the, the members were never asked for their opinion on it, um, which is disappointing, I would suggest, as in a vote of, do we want this? And we're, I'm sure there's lots of stories out there and the way it was railroaded through all the counties, the 100. I mean, the Twitter account, I'm, I run the Opposed 100 Twitter account as well as the uh, Lancashire yeah. Group account. But it, the franchise cricket, um, if you ask them, the vast majority of any member across all 18 counties, they won't want it. You know, they'd rather they stuck the t 20 and promoted that and the money went into that. How, but as I say, for Lancashire, I can completely understand why the board wants to promote it. And it is a big advantage not being tied into another county. As I say, you know, is it the Welsh Dragons? I think they're called. I think it's Somerset. Who do the counties down? Is it Gloucestershire and um, there's, there's, some, there's Southern Braves, but that's not Somerset. Then you have to go across to Welsh Fire, I think. It's, <laughs> I, that's guess, right. I don't know. So, so if, if regardless of that future, you would expect cricket, county cricket clubs to want to have a healthy membership base and a mm-hmm. healthy, enjoyable, effective member experience, um, regardless of whether they're a test match ground or not. Well, I, I'm going to have to uh, kind of centre it with that. I don't think Lancashire care about how many members they've got. They don't. Right. They don't write to the members who have left. Never wrote to me when I left. They don't, they're not interested. I think it suits them not to have members. They'd rather have season ticket holders. The major majority of the money that the club make is nothing to do with cricket. Obviously, the concerts, as I said, mentioned car park and the hospitality for Manchester United games. Um, and I had a meeting with them over a business I had years ago. They didn't realise how big a Lanx fan I was. And they basically said, well, the members are members, you know, but they don't bring, they even bring their own flask and sandwiches. They don't spend uh, money behind the bar, et cetera, et cetera. So the members are treated... And I, this was said to me by a number of people a few years ago. I said, well, I'm sure they do. They don't want members. They really don't want the members. They're an irritant. You know, the fact that they're playing home games away from Old Trafford, they, they, they'll put the concert first. It, and and if, if Manchester United were having the Rolling Stones, they'd make sure that they weren't playing when there might be an FA Cup game at home to Liverpool. Well, Lancashire will just put on the concert and move the game. So they had a T20 quarterfinal where they played at home playing Durham. So Durham played Essex. Sorry, Lancashire played Essex at Durham. It was a home T20. They, they hadn't made sure that whenever the ground was available, that the first and foremost was for, was for the cricket. And at the end of the day, let's keep going back to it, it's a cricket club owned by the members. So then, I mean, they, they're saying they're prioritising the members now, but there was very scant notice of that. The the MRG as well had the meeting um, cancelled at short notice because of all the problems we're having last year. We said we'd deal with it. There's no, there's no accountability there. Um, so I think, as I say, the members are seen as an innocence at, at, by the board at, uh, at Lancashire, which is a massive shame, obviously. And, and that comes across. I mean, I, I was a, mem- a season ticket holder of Manchester United. If I don't renew my season ticket, I get emails, texts, phone calls. You you, you know it. Yeah. You, you're paying uh, more, you know, by my point out, customer, by quite a lot. Out there, the, ones, <laughs> the best customers you've got, the ones already out there. So Lancashire's never made a real effort to try and sort that. Um, and I think that, you know, whether it'll end up being season tickets, um, who knows what the future county cricket is, unfortunately. So in a depressing place at the moment. Um, well, well, it is. And this is why I think this conversation is timely. And one of the things that we as Gorilla Cricket want to do together with the CSA is to talk to as many 
county chairman and county CEOs as we can, because um, we do. You've cited Surrey, who do so many good things in so many ways. Uh, mm -hmm. I see Middlesex doing a lot in good ways. I know they've had some bad PR recently. Um, yes. But I, yeah. I think that was through rather clumsy presentation, not not lack of good things that they're actually doing. And if indeed membership and season ticket seats are really pretty much the same thing. So I, I, I have to speak up on behalf of Middlesex, who, regardless of what people think, are not a test match ground. We happen to be tenants at one. That's, That's different, right. a yeah. very different situation. Um, <laughs> but I do, I have to say, put my hand up for Middlesex and say, as a member, I do feel valued uh, by, by, my, by, by, by my, my association with them. Ian, if you could pick one thing from the things we've talked about with Lancashire, he, hmm. what would that, would that be? Would that be the member's representation to create a better supporter member experience um, yeah. and, and doing that in, in, in partnership? Is that, would that be fair that that's the one big win for yeah. you and still is? Yeah. We're, we're, not, we're not trying to, you know, we're not anarchists here. We've, we just want what's, you know, a democratic right of the members. And, and then hopefully moving forward, we get some representation members on the board so some of the decisions they've made over the last few years which have been disastrous did not they then have to well you know you hopefully got two strong-minded people on the board who say hang on a second you know that's not fair on the membership if you're doing that you're taking those tickets out there you're doing this of course and that and michael cairns in 2014 said to me we took the eye off the ball we admit that you know mm. yeah you know with, with a lot of the changes they made because there was no proper consultation with members then and well, that's the thing. The nominations committee, which I know the ECB, like in a lot of counties, that's a, you know, you've got to trust that the members will be represented by people. There are people out there who are intelligent businessmen who can be county fans as well. It's not one or the other. You know, you can be both. No, I don't, I don't, you can, I don't you know. Well, be, I, you've got to be able to see that the club's got to make money, otherwise it goes bankrupt. But you've also got to see the opinion of the actual members who own the club. And that's the one thing that I want to change. And hopefully... We have a forthcoming age, and we can we can start. The on PSA, that. let's re reprise the fact that ninety eight percent of respondents to that survey mm -hmm. done in partnership with the CSA endorsed that that Absolutely. request. So, yeah. whatever the that's reason, what they, got in touch. they they saw our campaign. You say they saw our campaign, and it mirrors basically what they want across all eighteen councils. Yeah, and what whatever the recalcitrance or resistance from the club, no one listening to this interview, I think would doubt the sincerity of, and the passion and, 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 and the, and the you know, two of, of the request. So um, I'm, we're glad we've given you the, the opportunity to convey that, which, you, which I think you. you've done quite marvellously, actually. Um, you. So Ian Lomax, it's been fantastic to chat to you, to learn about you know, something I've heard something about and I now know a lot more about, and hopefully all of our listeners do. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you for your time, Tony. Really enjoyed it myself. Thank you. Revolutionary, Revolutionary. 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 Revolutionary.